Hi, I'm Thomas Wells. Hello everyone, I'm Thomas Wells and this is the 340 recap video for lecture 37. So we started off by looking at a particular case of Euler's EOMs where we had an axially symmetric body such as this cylinder illustrated here, as well as a constant angular velocity omega around the z-axis. So because this is a symmetric body, we can set ix and iy equal to it, which is the transverse moment of inertia, and iz equal to ia. So if we plug in ia and it into our EOMs, we arrive at this solution here after a little bit of algebra, more of which can be seen in lecture 36 where we derive this equation. Uh, if we set lambda equal to this quantity here, we can see that this equation simplifies even more to that of an undamped mass spring damper system, which we know the general solution of as well as the initial conditions. So differentiating, we can find A and B, and then we arrive at the exact solution of the angular velocity around the x-axis. So once again, using a little bit more algebra, we can see that omega x dot equals negative lambda omega y from Euler's EOMs, and we can differentiate this and use our initial conditions for y to find this equation here, which simplifies to this down here. So in conclusion, we have our angular velocities around the x, y, and z axis, as shown here. An important note is that the magnitude of this vector is a constant, which leads to a conical shape of rotation around a symmetric body which we'll see more of in a second. My name is Jacob Fabella, and I'm giving the second part of this lecture recap video for lecture 37. In the second part of the lecture, we learned about predicting the motion of a symmetric body, in this case, the football. First, you need to set your reference frame, then your dry rotation, omega, then the in-plane projection. Over a period of time, both your vectors will make circles, and this is how you get your body cone. Then, to find the direction of rotation, it is based on these two Euler equations. We then assume lambda is greater than zero, then looking at our omega dot equations, we use that assumption to give you a direction using these equations. So, what does this mean in the case of the angular momentum vector? We have to use Euler's law again, and we take the moments about the center of mass. Our angular momentum is in the inertial frame, which does not change. But if we use the body frame, we can get more info. We can rewrite our angular momentum vector in terms of the products of inertia and the angular velocity components. We then check the magnitude of angular moments, which is constant. We then can look at direction. You can then conclude angular momentum vector is in the plane that is defined by omega xy and v3 vector, and those two only. We can then define angular velocity vector using gamma as the angle between v3 and angular velocity. And then, the fact that we know angular velocity equals omega xy plus big omega b3, we then get this tangent equation and solve for it, all while assuming gamma and theta are constant. 